All right, welcome everybody to the Royalton uh, School Board Monthly Meeting. Let us start with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, third thing on the agenda is the roll call. Let the record reflect all board members are in attendance. Number four, board chair comment. I have no comments. Number five, approval for agenda. For a motion to approve the agenda. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> motion has been made by Director Bauman, seconded by Director Hofstad. Um, I any discussion? I do. I would like to add agenda item J, and that is to um, approve the master contract between Royalton School District and the Royalton Education Support Professionals. All in favor of approving the agenda with the amendment? Aye. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6 0. Number six, recognition, appreciation, and presentations. Board members, Superintendent Wearcamp, member of the public, I am here to. Uh, introduce a few. I'm, I'm speaking for uh, Mr. Newman tonight, who's at the AD's conference. Um, and so we do have some student uh, recognition that we would like to do. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Goldaddy, who is our AG teacher, who has some presentations. Okay. Um, so our FFA um, poultry team just competed last week. Um, we had a couple other people, a couple other teams that competed as well, but our poultry team took first place at the regional competition. Um, and that team consisted of Brian Bozer. You guys can come up and say your name. Brian Bozer, Aaron Borash, Sarah Delighton, <laughs> and Kaylee Rudolph. Yay. And they qualified to go to the state competition, which will be on April 25th, so the 24th to 26th, but they'll compete on the 25th um, at the University of Minnesota on campus um, and get to do all their different parts of a competition. Um, one thing they do is candle eggs. So they um, look at eggs and make sure there's no um, defects. Um, they had to look at chicken patties like ground chicken patties and make sure there's no defects or anything like that. Um, so there's no hair or no chunks of anything. Um, no discoloring. They weren't burned, things like that. What were some of the other pieces you did? You have to take a written test. A written test. Bring X to you, follow these events, and um, bring carcasses, and then um, identify parts of the carcass. So lots of different things go into it. Um, and they have to have a lot of knowledge. So um, they will be going to compete at state for FFA on April 25th. Congratulations. Did you get a picture? Yeah. What's the picture? Tell us what's the picture. All right, picture. <laughs> so you guys, let me go stand. Yeah, we do. It's like here. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'd like to bring in Mr. Chris Kopikus, who's going to talk about uh, our band. Hi, everybody. Hello. Uh, the Senior High Band went to a large group contest this year and uh, received a superior rating. The way it works is we uh, play for three judges, and to get a superior rating, you need to earn a 35 or higher, 35 to 40. We received a 37, a 36, and a 33. So that gives us a superior rating. And we'll be putting a, another trophy in the cabinet outside the band. And so the kids are very excited about that. I guess so. <laughs> you guys didn't know your thing? No. Chris, you have to I will bring up Miss Bird with BPA. We had, well, we started the year with four and then suddenly it ballooned to like 21. Mm -hmm. And I had 15 qualified for state and 14 that made it. Um, and they compete in a wide variety of events. Some of them are written tests. So we had a banking and finance, some personal financial management, device configuration and troubleshooting. Um, we had uh, business law and ethics. So we had, Nick Block was a state finalist, so he placed in the top 10 in both personal financial management and banking and finance. Isaac Ramos placed top 10 in business law and ethics. Our admin support team had to complete tasks using Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and this year they also had to do a database, which threw them for a complete loop and waiting to see the test so we can prepare better. But they were also top 10. Um, podcast production team had to put together a, was it a two to three minute podcast? Five three to five minute podcast on TikTok and present about it to a judge at state. Um, Michael Zimmerman did digital media production. He had to do an unboxing of a product and give a review and record himself and then present about it at state. And so we had our state wrap up at the beginning of the month and we were close to going to nationals, but we didn't have anyone qualify this year. So we'll take our 14 and try again next year. And maybe find some more, find some more friends. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, thank you for the thank you cards too. Yes, right? yep. yes that was yeah. great. That was so nice. Thank you. Yeah. Then that was their idea. Yeah. 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 Y
um, who was an unseated team at the time, but they wrestled very, very well. Um, and we defeated them 34-33, uh, um, which was a tremendous contest. And then we wrestled for the state championship with Jackson County Central, um, who really, really had a, a good team this year. And uh, uh, we wrestled hard, but we dropped. We, we just fell behind early and, and couldn't catch up. Um, second place finish for our wrestling team is the highest finish that it's, the program has ever had. Um, coach Terry Gretzky was the seven double seven a head coach of the year, and uh, I'm going to call up his brother Scott, who was also our assistant coach, who was the section seven a assistant wrestling coach of the year. So I'd like to welcome Scott Gretzky to come up. <laughs> Yeah, I can do it. Sure. Uh, I just want to first thank you guys, the board and the community for having this. Um, I'm, I'm come, I come from Foley. I was a head coach there for a long time and we, we tend to do a lot of these, you know, for this type of, for the right reason. Um, I want to congratulate the wrestlers, not just the varsity kids, the, the whole team. Um, they won't be here if it wasn't for all the kids that are their, their practice partners. Um, the junior high kids, you know, all that recognition, it, it takes everybody. Uh, and, and that's what we have this year. Uh, not just in wrestling, they're also um, gold. They, they won the academic gold um, standard, which is as a team 3.25, I believe. Um, I'm not sure where you guys stand. Um, any you boys know? 3.6, so not just, um, just their skill and on the mat, also uh, the grades itself. So that was, uh, always a pleasure and, and, and so forth, but uh, had a great year, right? Um, we were 25 and two, uh, like uh, the principal, right? What, what was your name? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Joe, I should know that. Um, but great support with him. Uh, it's always great to see him at, at matches. Tony supporting us, the AD, I know he's not here, um, but just a gr great, great year and, and credit for the hard work these guys did. Um, it just doesn't happen. Right, uh, and for them to to succeed and get better and, and be wrestle as a team, because um, it is an individual sport, but also it's very team aspect. So it was a very pleasure. We end up also on, on the individual portion. We end up having four finalists, right? Uh, the best in the whole state tournament, uh, period. Um, two state state champions. We have Alex. If you can stand up, um, he's end up being a, a state champion for us. So um, congratulations on that, Jeremy Love. Yep. Jamie Mott, also a state champion for us. He had two other finalists. We had Jake uh, Leibolt and, and uh, Gabe Duretsky, which just fell short. But um, just, you know, so many other good things. We had, uh, you know, uh, other placers. Um, they're not here right now, but I could talk about, I could talk wrestling, believe me, all, all day, right? I'm, I'm kind of crazy. Uh, I get crazy thinking about it, coming from a, a very rich area and, and a head coach um, and, and fully there for a long time. But uh, it's just... Uh, it's, it's great to have you guys do this. It's great recognition of hard work, discipline. Um, and uh, that's really all I have. I, I don't know what else other than thanking you guys, thanking the, the school support. Uh, we need that. And we don't, I believe there's not enough of it, but it's great to come in here. And for my first year, um, just, uh, you know, and, and being part of that is, is, is it's been, been a pleasure, especially with my, with being with my brother, um, just something we always talked about, thought he'd come to Foley before I'd come to Royalton, um, but uh, just worked out that way. And, and uh, congratulations for the team uh, with all their efforts. And um, thank you guys. So I'll have a uh, picture here. We have certificates for, um, just to put in perspective, when we talk about what did we have, five five or six place winners in state yeah six. six there were years where in this program not in the too distant past where we thought we had a good year and didn't have five section place winners and here we have that tells you the kind of year you have when you have six that place in the state um which is a 
it was a, just a testament to how tough this team really was. They were, if you did not get a chance to see them this year, they were, well, a lot of the duels weren't really that exciting because it was like 51 to seven or something like that. But uh, um, they did a, they did a really nice job. So I'm going to call up these guys who were place winners. Uh, Alex Diedrich was the section seven champ and the state champion. Tucker Simmons. Tucker's not here. He was fifth place. Uh, we have Jeremy Mugg, who was an Uppsala student. Um, he was the Section 7A champion and a state champion at 285. We have Bryce Holm. Um, he was the Section 7A champion. Uh, place winner and finished in fourth place at the state tournament. Gabe Gretzky was the section 7A champion and finished as the state runner up. And Jacob Leibold was a section 7A champion and was also a state runner up at the state wrestling tournament. And then again, congratulations to all the wrestlers that are here tonight. Do you want them all for the picture? Yeah, all sure. right. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys might have to do a little. Jump on the sides. Get a few more of them, Just for you, Randy. All right, here we go. One, two, three. All right, good job. Good job. Okay, thanks, Shane. Let's cap on, yeah. That's all I have. Thank you. What? Tucker. Any other appreciation recognition, Dr. Rabat, anything? Yeah. Nope. Okay. Then we will move to item seven, which is recognition for citizens for input purposes. Do you have anybody? Okay. Um, I'm Greg Kelsey. Um, Good evening, board members and Dr. Wertham. I'm here to talk through the, the strategic plan proposals. Um, so I spent some time going through them and kind of trying to understand the process and how it works within the school districts and, um, and the different proposals and how they, what, op what offerings they have and kind of what we've been kind of going through it for the last few months. And it kind of seems like there was some hesitation in different areas and I just wanted to give my two cents since as a parent here at the school district and then offering uh, um, me and offering my, myself to be on the committee if there's a committee that gets assembled for this. Um, so in, in having spent the time reviewing the proposals and the structures and the efforts uh, put forth by the MSBA innovative the educational solutions, Lily Pet Consulting and the Watson Consulting, they all seem really similar in their approaches. Uh, MSVA, like Dr. Wertham said previously, is they're more towards schools. Obviously they have a kind of a, maybe a, a better foot forward because of that. The other three seem more of a corporate style. Um, I think we're gonna get very similar outcomes um, consisting of a one to two page document with strategic plans, um, belief statements, mission statement, vision, vision statements, those types of things. 
uh, I mean, going through a number of other ones, just trying to figure out what do these things look like. So I found a number of them online that MSBA has put together, about 13 to 14 of them. And they're all, they're all very, very similar um, with those same core principles. And they have their areas of focus, which they, which they, which they identify, and then the goals and the objectives that are tied to those areas of focus. And you know, you go from school district to school district. There's the first one is almost always the world's best workforce. Mm -hmm. So there's one of them that's goals already pretty much outlined for us in state statute. Um, so I, I wanted I wanted to kind of share that and what the information that I was finding. Uh, and just kind of provide my uh, two cents to you guys as we go through this process. And I know the timing is going to be over the summer and maybe in the fall, or so it might be a little bit difficult to get some of the parents and community members to commit consistently. Um, so always the problem. Yep. You know, it's, so, it's always the problem. Yep. Um, the other thing I just wanted to say is the I think that one of the benefits if we can bring it to a district level coordination wise, I think we could help build some relationships between the community members, board members, principals, administration here, um, and parents and help kind of have more of a collaboration or even more collaboration uh, so that we can put our best foot forward in the school district and um, Thank you. Any other citizens for input? All right, then we will move on to uh, reports and news, board committee report. Kent State is uh, looking for a new director through MSBA. So that's what kind of took up the majority of the meeting last, last one. So they will be head on team for us, whatever that is. So they will be looking for candidates for us. So we're kind of excited about that. So is there a goal for how many candidates are looking for? Oh, I don't know, Randy, but it, I'm sure they'll keep it minimal. You know, they'll, mm. they'll get it to let down to where. Yeah, I know, I know. Little, little. Okay. Sure. Or finance. Finance, but um, it was a lot of kind of what we had looked at before. Um, we did give some input on some things that we would like to see changed on some of the reports um, that just might be a little bit more helpful and easier to read. So pretty much the same information that we covered. Again, those meetings we moved um, to the third Wednesday, right? Um, so then hopefully we'll have better numbers moving forward so we can have newer reports when we meet as a group. So policy, uh, we went through the non-discrimination policy, violence prevention, bullying again, and uh, we went really in depth in the crisis management policy. Um, so that that took up about a good hour and a half of that meeting, I think. Um, but that's uh, that's really where we're at and on the policies that we looked through this last time. All right. Any other? Report. I think that's it. Committee report. How about superintendent report item 8B? Yeah, well, um, let you know that April is going to be a big month for us, of course. You know, it's right around the corner. We have MCA testing will be starting here in a couple of weeks. We have MCT testing next week. Um, we have speech going to subsections in April as well. <clears throat> we have 42 days left of school. Can you believe that? It's gone quite quickly. Um, but as you saw with all of our students here tonight, we're engaged in lots of activities with lots of student involvement and we're successful. And I think you could see that they have fun in those activities. And, you know, we always have to remind ourselves that's why we're here is for them and what they're accomplishing. And so I, I just was really pleased that as many of them were able to come tonight um, because it's, they deserve to be shown some gratitude and respect for what they've done. So. 
Um, I will be going to the Capitol with other superintendents in Region 5 on Wednesday to talk to our local legislators. We're going to be talking a lot about that uh, cross-subsidy issue we have with special education that this state's had a problem with for years and not fixed it. So we will be advocating to rectify that, if at all possible. Um, Randy, I think you'll be joining me and helping me with this. And then, um, yeah, so that advocacy work will continue. Um, that and always equalization. So um, those are the two main conversations we generally have, as well as loosening up funding streams so that local control uh, here works much better. So for example, long-term facility maintenance dollars, how we're able to use those. There's such stringent um, requirements on those and it's outdated, it's antiquated. And so we're hoping that we can get some of those language shifts. However, it's an election year, everybody's up for re-election, every single one of them. So we don't know really what we'll get done, if anything. So we'll do our best to advocate and hopefully make change. So that's what I have. Any questions for Dr. Lucan? All right, then we'll go to the business manager report. Oh, Dave is here. Hi, Dave. Hello. Todd, or I was going to say, Todd, Scott didn't have the, the guts to come here before you guys. So <laughs> good thing. I, I drew the, I drew the, uh, the, short, straw. the short straw. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll be presenting uh, two different times tonight. One is uh, the budget through February um, of of this year, and then later, I think in section 10, E, I'll do the revised budget. Um, and we'll, we'll go ahead and go to the next slide. Enrollment, um, starting at the end of the fiscal year, uh, last fiscal year, we started out at 920 um, ADM. Uh, we're holding steady or stable at 922 through February. Uh, revenues are looking uh, really good right now. We're about 102,000 uh, favorable to plan. The only thing I'd note in here in, uh, uh, is in the property taxes, you can see um, it shows 0.24% of those received. We've actually received them all. It's just an accounting balance sheet. Um, everything is was brought in and, and sent to the balance sheet. It wasn't assigned to the revenue codes as of yet. And we will we will rectify that in, in a future report or in future report updates. So we're on track for that, and actually, um, probably this month um, we'll be receiving the rest of the, the property taxes if we haven't already. Uh, titles and CARES grants um, were reviewed. Adjustments were submitted to SERVs last week. Federal draws, with the exception of summer school, will be current by the end of this March. Uh, expenses, um, we are up 772,000 year to date as compared to the same time last year. Uh, drivers for that are salary and wages, uh, benefits tied to that. Um, Uh, what's the other one? Uh, supplies and equipment. So we had an HVAC project um, that actually, um, so that's the 114, I think, thousand that was last uh, last year. Um, that's still tied into this fiscal year. And then uh, supplies and purchase services. Uh, purchase services was all is a whole population of charges anywhere from $1,000 to $10,000 in various purchase services that we've approved thus far. Um, nothing unexpected. Uh, to reiterate, um, uh, just the regular education costs, you know, COVID, we're back up to pre-COVID um, um, with extracurricular activities, so uh, $110,000 more than our prior year prior. Um, and the nice thing is, is we do have, we have been utilizing the CARES funding uh, for one, one time uh, expenditures to, to help offset our expenses. Um, with MAP and the Little Royals uh, program, um, Christine asked uh, Scott and I to put together a uh, profitability analysis. 
Uh, so we looked at everything from budget, salary, supplies, equipment, purchase service, anything that had to do with uh, the costs associated with those programs. We're happy to report that through February of this year, um, MAP is almost $27,000 uh, to the positive. Uh, Little Oils is three, four grand to the positive. We will continue to track those on a, on a monthly ongoing basis. And then any questions on the budget through February of this year? Thank you. Principal report. Richard Person Gerrans, uh, board members, Dr. Workamp, good evening. We had another very good uh, in service on March 18th. And again, we're working at integrating our benchmark advanced reading curriculum with the ELA standards. And I was glad or not surprised, but delighted the progress we did made and the positive <coughs> comments from the teachers as they worked. So they really worked. We went worked from eight till eight to four day, but we worked together eight till three and uh, went well. I'm working with Nicole Call to get the work that we have completed up on the website. So along with the math standards, we'll have our ELA standards and we'll just keep adding to that as we complete more work. Uh, we're already planning for August. Where we'll, we'll begin working on uh, assessments and finishing up some of the work that we started here. So congratulations to the teachers and the uh, Rachel Logan was the consultant who worked with us. We're also beginning transition planning for next year, meaning uh, looking at some of the things we play, put in place during COVID, what do we want to keep? What do we want to change? So we're going to start doing that. Actually, this Wednesday morning, I'm meeting with the faculty and uh, at least a beginning discussion of clarifying what next year will look like, assuming we're going to be back into more of a normal school year. And we don't want to let go of some of the more creative things we've done but we wanna put back into place, maybe some of the things we had taken out that we'd like to see again. So that's happening. We had a really good preschool information night. It was on March 22nd. The cafetorium was filled. Uh, presentations went well. Uh, people spent a lot of time visiting the classrooms, got registered. Uh, we have about 65 people already registered. And the way things look, uh, again, depending on cost analysis and, and so forth, it looks like we'll be likely expanding uh, okay. next year. So there's still quite a bit of time for enrollment to come in. So of course that's good news because if you bring them in in preschool, they're a lot more likely to stay for kindergarten. And a very positive night. Uh, I'd like to compliment our PTO whenever I get the chance. They serve supper at our March conferences, and they do that every year. Uh, but what a positive group of people. We had a meeting just last week, and they are just, like I mentioned before, they're just there to see what we need. They're there to serve. And I think that says something about the relationship with the school and the community, but something about the parents. They, they want to be there to support their children. So other than that, unless you have questions. I, I have just one question. So mm -hmm. when you're setting these benchmarks and stuff, um, do you find that you get not buy-in, but maybe more ownership of it when you when you have, when they have the time to work as a group together on something like that or I mean, is, is there is that like a team building atmosphere then too? Is that is that what you find with them? Yeah, it makes all the difference in the world, and we're able to work in grade level partners. But we also did some practice in reviewing each other's work. So second grade would meet with first grade or K through two together, and did practice on how to give feedback on the work that's been completed. So kind of like editing, group editing, do we agree with what we've decided on? Is it worded the correct way? Mm -hmm. So 
yes yeah. it, that i don't think it would be very effective without that and you, you also mentioned a key thing time yeah. having the time can't do these things in half an hour it takes two hours to start to get the momentum going sometimes and some of the best works in the afternoon so that's a great question Chairman Gerd, Superintendent Work Camp. Uh, we had a uh, also had in service on March 18th. Um, uh, Cindy Swenson helped us facilitate that. No relation. Um, we uh, um, started off the morning together reviewing kind of the roadmap of where we've been with high reliability schools, uh, where we where we're where we've been and where we're going, and kind of what the current reality is. Um, we then met with, throughout the rest of the day, met with each individual department. Um, I was very encouraged if you would have asked me, like our, if you would have, on a one through four scale, one being, eh, we're in trouble, two, we, we have building blocks in place, we kind of know the mechanics of it, three, we're using it, four, we're knocking it out of the park. Um, with proficiency scales, I would have put us in a two region where we're, we have the building blocks, where we're, we, we know how to make the proficiency scales. We know we're starting to implement them, um, starting to know how to review and connect them to standards. Um, as we went through the day, uh, I became very encouraged by the conversations that the teachers were having. Um, by the end of the day, I felt like we had jumped, maybe not, we're not, maybe not at a three yet, but we're definitely at 2.5. They are starting to increase the usage, understand just the conversation. There's at least three times during that day where Mr. Newman, myself, and Cindy were sitting there and the teachers started having a PLC conversation amongst themselves about student achievement, where, I mean, I seriously, I could have got up and walked out. They didn't need us there. And I thought that was an incredibly important step uh, that uh, I, I even talked to the staff at the staff meeting the next week and said, you know, don't look now, but you guys are having PLC conversations and you don't even realize you're doing it. And that is super exciting. The first year and a half of leading HRS is kind of like putting a blindfold on, walking through the woods within the dark. And you're kind of feeling your way through it. As I'm leading it, I'm not exactly sure where this is going to go, but I know what the pieces are and kind of the general direction. Um, there came a point for me where I felt like I came out of it, you could see a bigger picture. And the problem was I was the only one that was seeing that right away. And through the conversations we had on Friday, I had a whole bunch of teachers that came to that spot where they were starting to understand how these things played together. Um, at least three times in my 22 years in the school district, we curriculum mapped and all three of them died in the curriculum map building stage, um, which is a lot of front end work, a lot of heavy lifting and for, and you don't, you don't get to the student benefit that the, the goal is not curriculum mapping. The goal is to use the curriculum map to affect student achievement. Um, we are to a point where we have finally conquered that piece and are moving away from the physical curriculum mapping uh, work and are starting to move that into work with students and evaluating student performance. And so uh, the teachers deserve a lot of credit. It's been a long journey. Um, they've done a tremendous job and, and they're still working. We're still pushing to get them done. Um, we want that online document that everyone can go to and look at our standards. It's a, it's a a live document it should be constantly you know that that should not be a link that sits there and gets clicked on once a year and it's the same thing all the time it should be evolving and moving as teachers implement different standards curriculum renews um, we move further into the process and so i'm excited because we are right at that point where a lot of those things are starting to happen so it was a great day for the for the in service so thank you and any questions yes sir so does somebody else want to ask first question? So you talk about this, you know, is this something that once it achieves critical mass, it'll keep on going? I'm, I'm thinking about what happens when you hire a new teacher that comes in here and doesn't have any experience with HRS. 
But are they really going to be lost, or is there going to be enough things going around that they're just going to be able to pick up, pick it up? Or I would actually argue that. So if the new teacher, and we will have a couple of new teachers that start with us next year, there isn't a better roadmap for a new teacher to come in. Here's our expectations. Here's the way we do it. Be creative with it and bring your own ideas to it. But when I started here, but my mentor gave me a pile of books and said, have fun. We'll see you in June, you know. Um, they'll have a team. To they'll work have on. a team to work on, a team to work with. That's all been through the similar stuff. They can go to any staff member in the building that's been here more than a year and they can have that dialogue and have that communication about this process. And if we pull a new teacher from a surrounding district, they might already be doing it for us. Yeah, they could so be, but I just, really you know, I, I hate to see this something that happened with this group of teachers that's here now in five years from now, if you got 30% or 20% or 50, whatever that number is that are just lost because they, they missed out on that, you know, Learning can be fun. When you're learning how to do something, it can be fun. And if you're not part of that, sometimes you, you don't get the whole story. So I just I look at it as or HRS is an organized manner in which to pursue best practice. And so at, when we continue that and we continue that work, um, it's not something that you shelf because it is now the way you do business. And so uh, we are closer and closer to that we we know what best practice is and we are constantly striving to improve ourselves in those areas. So how yeah. close are you to, you know, what was it, six, seven years ago when you went down to what school was it to to, to go see the HRS and you came Jam back and you're you're you you just did this when you came back, you know. Um how close are we to where I mean I know when I talked to you at that point, you, you thought, boy, that's a long ways away. How close are we to that? Much, much closer. And it's not just HRS there. They were also a strong PBIS school, yep. which we also yep. went into. So yes, we have pushed our chips much closer to that. And uh, um, we still have work to do. And, and, the, and the challenges we have are sometimes manpower and just the, our sizes um, um, create some benefits for us. It also creates some challenges. Um, it's harder to have a conversation if Russ and I teach the same math class, we can talk about how we tested and how we taught and this went well and this didn't go well. In, in their system, they had a big advantage of four teachers get together and compare everything that they were doing where, and speaking from experience of being a teacher here, I am the world history teacher. Group, There's no one group else. Group of one. Yes, I'm a group of one. And so that is a challenge for us that is based on our size. Mm -hmm. um, but we find ways to have different conversations to align ourselves, whether it's vertical or grade level teams or department level teams. Pairing up at the elementary school, we have those types of conversations to help us cement that stuff in. So I guess there's so much good work that's getting done and just trying to see if you find getting done. That's so I sat in on a couple of those and one that I sat in on was interesting because I had a similar conversation at the elementary school where the one teacher had all of this and said, I'm afraid to put it up if it's not good enough. And I said, again, this is continuous improvement. You are not allowed to be a perfectionist. And so you could see some relief that it is, we expect continuous improvement from our students. We have to expect it from ourselves. This is a craft. And so we just It'll have never to be keep, perfect. never. And so It'll we never have to keep perfect. reminding staff we're here to support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Swenson, Dr. Uh, we are moving to item number nine, consent agenda. Um, the items that are included in consent agenda are the approval of the February 28th uh, meeting minutes, meeting minutes from the work session from March 14th, claims accounts and financials, uh, approval of resignations, and approval of new hires. The caveat on the new hires is the Royalty School Board will approve the following hires based upon their findings of each individual's background, licensure status, and discipline report from the Minnesota Department of Education. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second.
Motion has been made by Director Hackett and seconded by Director Lane to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? Remember to, if there's something in there that we want to take out, we certainly can do it. That's my comment. So if there are no other discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 6-0. Moving on to item number 10, discussion, information, action items. The first one, our favorite one, <laughs> except if you have to read it. <laughs> That's a lot better on yeah, this side. Yeah. <laughs> Should be a Bible salesman, right? <laughs> Approval of donations by resolution. Uh, resolution of acceptance of gifts to the Royalton School District member. Hofstede. Member Hofstead introduced the following resolution and moved its adoption. Whereas all information is included in your packet, uh, the Royalton Travel Baseball Club has generously donated two thousand four hundred and three dollars and seventy-five cents for a PA speaker system to be in installed on the Royalton Varsity Baseball Field. Michael and Emily Mitzel have generously donated $50 to the Royalton Community uh, Education Robotics and $50 to the Royalton Middle School High School Robotics team to be used for registration supplies and or tournament fees. The Royalton American Legion has generously donated $2,500 to the National Honor Society. The Royalton's Lions Club has generously donated $534 to the Yes Club for a solar light on the school sign by the road. <laughs> Technical term there. Royalton Youth Travel Baseball Club has generously donated $5,000 to be used by the RBI Club on the varsity softball field project. Royalton American Legion has again donated $2,000 to the Royalton Middle School Robotics Team to be used for registration supplies and or tournament fees. Uh, Earl and Gail Matheson have generously donated $40 to the Royalton High School Volleyball Account for Equipment. Whereas the conditions of these gifts are included in the packet, therefore be it resolved by the Royalton School Board to greatly accept the gifts. The motion for adop adoption for the foregoing resolution was duly seconded by member Lang. Lang. And upon a roll call vote being taken, therefore, there, there on the following voted in favor of Director Bowman, Hobson, Director Garrett's, aye, Director Hackett, aye, Director Hofstad, aye, Director Lang, aye, Director Roaring, same. The following voted against, I don't believe anybody, and the following actually abstained. So the motion passed, the, the foregoing resolution was approved. Uh, the 28th day of March, 2022, and it was 6-0. All right. Another one of my favorite topics, yeah. Uh, item B under 10, uh, we have to authorize, authorize signers for Pine Country Bank. Um, so I'm going to read this and then we'll end up voting on it, making sure we need to make sure it's clear in our meeting minutes. So upon mm -hmm. authorized signers of the district's depository accounts in all certificates of deposit, removing Randy Hackett, prior school board chair, and Tyra Bauman, prior school board treasurer, effective March 28, 2022, and adding Russ Garrett, school board chair, and Angela Roaring, school board treasurer, as authorized signers on behalf of the district, effective March 28, 2022. Ryan Hofstede, school board clerk, and Scott Marine, business manager, shall continue to be authorized signers on behalf of the district. Do I have a motion? So I move. Second. It was motioned by Director Lane, seconded by Director Bauman. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion passes 6-0. Item C, senior class trip. You got to keep it active, Joel. <laughs> 
Principal Swinton again tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope Vintage is the last one. Um, so this I'm putting this forward this evening to request approval for the senior class trip to Craigans on May 22nd and May 23rd. Um, it's a tradition that we've had at Royalton for the entire time I've been here. We've done, if not a class trip, but most of the time that we've done it uh, has been this class trip. Um, we leave Sunday morning, eight o'clock from the high school. Uh, the students stop and eat at the McDonald's in Brainerd, and then we reach uh, Craigans right around 10, 15, 10, 30, go through a little initiation to the, to the resort. And then the students have access to canoeing, golfing, swimming. Uh, they have an indoor pool and hot tub and video games and ping pong. And um, they have a, a, a athletic center with basketball hoops and tennis courts. And um, we've had a golf tournament in the past. Uh, a nice long beach, beach volleyball. Um, we order a tremendous amount of pizza for them on Saturday night. Um, it is, uh, they, they couldn't be hungry when they were done. Um, we usually have a large bonfire on the beach if the weather is nice. It has not been nice the last few years and judging by what it is right now, it'll probably be snowing. Um, but we will have a bonfire on the beach if we can. Maybe they can go ice fishing. Um, <laughs> on Monday, the students, uh, we get up and have a little breakfast. Um, usually some we pick up rolls or donuts uh, for the students. And then uh, we get the cabins cleaned out and kind of hang out in the morning. And, um, and then we leave around 11, stop for lunch at Buffalo Wild Wings and Brainerd. And then the students return to the school where they're dismissed for the day. Um, we have usually three to four staff chaperones and three to four parent chaperones that the students nominate um, in meetings coming up. Um, baggage is checked by the staff that are chaperoning the trip to make sure our kids are following the rules. Um, we use our own buses to go up there. Students aren't used, are allowed to use motorized vehicles while they're up there. They can't rent boats and um, pontoons and things like that, but they can canoe and kayak and do those kinds of things. Uh, trip is paid for by the class dues. They were all, the students always ask for all their time in school what the class dues are for. And uh, the class dues go to pay this trip. Um, and so even through COVID, we were still collecting class dues, even though it was at a reduced rate because we did not have some of the expenses that we typically have like homecoming and stuff like that, but we still collected them. Um, so they would have the possibility of having a class trip. Um, and so I am asking that uh, the board approve this trip and then we're bringing it to the board because it is overnight travel. Questions for Mr. Spencer? I have one. What do you think, uh, what's the percentage of seniors that go on this trip? Uh, 95. It's probably your most well attended. Yeah, yeah almost everybody. Um, some, the ones that we, we've had, some that have um, like a family trip or something going on, or they have a baccalaureate type of thing in their church in, in celebrations like that, that might take place um, very rarely. Um, we, I, we even had one year where we had some sort of school competition that was going on at date. I think it was like an FFA thing. Um, we have um, made arrangements to help those kids out as much as we can. But yeah, I would say 95, uh, maybe two or three kids every year. A motion to approve. Yeah. I'll second. Motion has been made by Director Bauman and seconded by Director Hackett. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor of approving the senior class trip, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes 6-0.
non-union contract approval. Let's see if everybody's had a chance. So this is between uh, the Royalton School District and the, condi and the uh, conditions of employment for the non-union employees. Any questions? Otherwise, I'm going to take a motion. I'll motion this one. I'll I'll second. second. I'm going to give it to Hofstad. <laughs> motion has been made to approve the non union contract. Uh, the motion was made by Director Baum and seconded by Director Hofstad. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes 6 0. Revised budget. Sounds like a lot. Dave's back. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. All right. Well, uh, we'll go ahead and show the, the spreadsheet. Yeah. Okay, so with the uh, starting with the on a side funding balance, um, we began uh, we began uh, fiscal year uh, twenty two at uh, one point nine two five million. Um, which was 20%, um, almost, uh, yeah, 20%. Our projected um, fund balance um, end of year for fiscal year 22 will be uh, 1.894 million, which is 17%. Our goal uh, is to keep that uh, unassigned fund balance between 15 and 20%. Most school districts are hedging more towards that 17, 18% right now is what we're seeing with the districts that we support. Um, so that number is, is, is right in line with where we, uh, I think where we want to be. Uh, revenue increase is the main reason why uh, the unassigned fund balance is going down just slightly. Um, as you can see in the column over, on the far right, um, the net decrease is $31,000. Important thing to remember about this is uh, all the revised budget is based off ADM of 916. Um, even though we are at 922 students right now, um, that cushion is what we like to build into our conservative modeling. Um, that's about represents about 50, 60 thousand dollars in a cushion. So um, we're essentially um, net net even plus or minus 30 thousand right now. Uh, when you look at it from that perspective. Uh, po positive variables uh, with this, uh, LTFM, um, we moved expenditures from building and grounds to L LTFM. Um, you notice in, in the prior uh, budgets um, that it was in, uh, needed, it, we needed to move it out, so we did. Um, uh, safe schools, uh, we can uh, code a counselor or a social worker here, and I believe that's 40, 50,000 a year with benefits is what we're talking about. Uh, budget spending is projected uh, high currently, but this will slow down as we uh, get towards the end of this fiscal year. We expect that to sl uh, slow down significantly as we uh, go into uh, May. Uh, Possible uh, negative uh, variances is going to be retro pay uh, for staff for the groups that have not settled negotiations or that have now settled negotiations. Um, ADM loss, which isn't likely, uh, and then unforeseen expenditures. Um, we'll take those as they come up, but nothing that we can see on the horizon. Fund two, uh, which is about halfway down there. 
There we go. Yep. Projected end of year balance is just shy of 60,000. Um, uh, models anticipate tax would reflect end of year profit and loss at this point. Trending is that revenues lag uh, expenditures. That is that is normal. Um, we'll see that month after month. Um, revenues do typically tend to lag the expenditures. Um, the seamless school, uh, the seamless, what is it, seamless summer? Yeah, seamless summer. I always get that mixed up. Uh, is ending June uh, 30th. Uh, so um, I understand there may be some further talk about that. Yes, yeah, so the legislature is still talking about maybe we can extend that, maybe we can offer just free lunch and breakfast moving forward. So there's lots of conversation where that will land. So this will, it does have the potential obviously to impact the fiscal year 23 budget. Um, we will be looking at setting new breakfast and lunch prices before fiscal year 223. Um, we don't have the, um, and Scott will have to help me with this. There's a report or some numbers that we need before we can do that. Yeah, the PLE tool is not out for FY23 yet. Um, it's something that we typically have to do is set our pricing for lunches um, and for adult, adult meal prices. Um, we haven't had to do it for two years because we've all been running on this SSO food service program. Um, but as soon as that comes out, um, and possibly they are waiting, because like Christine said, uh, there's still a lot of talk at the legislative level about having free breakfast and lunch. So we, this tool may be going away, but if it doesn't, um, we will certainly um, update that PLE tool and get our pricing for lunches and adult meals up to date. Uh, for fun four, uh, projected uh, end of year, uh, add uh, about 94,000 overall. Um, as uh, we discussed uh, prior about MAP and, and Little Royals, uh, we're both, uh, those are both uh, running uh, very well right now. Um, Little Royals is one where we're even okay if in, right now we're running about 3,000 uh, to the positive in that, in that program. But uh, that is definitely a feeder program uh, to have the kids continue to go to school at Royalton. So, um, we're okay, even if that was in the, in the negative, um, in order to uh, keep those kids uh, coming, coming back year after year. So, so the, the thing, uh, what we're looking for, is it approval for, um, is specifically on the revenues and the expenditures. Um, that's our focus and looking for bo uh, board approval um, for the revised budget. Any questions? Yeah, any questions for David Scott? All right, I will look for a motion then on approving the revised budget as presented. Motion. <laughs> Bauman and I'll second. Okay. So the motion was made by Director Bauman, seconded by Director Halleck to approve the revised budget. Any other discussion? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed and abstain. Motion passes 6 0. Item F make up day for teachers. Okay. So um, you can pull that up. As you know, um, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so you know we discussed prior. We have enough days built in so far for student contact days to be in compliance with state legislation. However, our teachers, in order to adhere <laughs> to the teacher contract, would need to add an additional day um, to to align to that. We did have to close on February 22nd due to snow. Um, so we need to add additional day for the teachers to the calendar. I am recommending that we add June 2nd as a teacher work day. Um, 
Again, we're required according to the contract to have 183 work days. The only breaks for teachers right now between February 21st and the end of the school year is Easter break. We currently run a high level of absences daily. Um, therefore, finding subs is, can be problematic um, at both schools. So I'm fearing that if we were to take Easter Monday away, that we would just further exasperate our problem with having more and more missed days and, and troubleshooting, subbing, and that type of thing. So I'd recommend we add June 2nd and allow teachers to use a personal day, comp day, or flex time if they have that available to them, or they can come in and continue to work on the proficiency skills that and um, all the HRS implementation tools that they've started doing throughout this entire year or had been doing through this year. So that would be my recommendation. I'll make a motion, and this was under discussion, to accept uh, June 2nd as a makeup day for teachers. Director Lang has made the motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion is made by Director Lang, seconded by Director Roy. Is there <clears throat> other questions or comments, discussion? I have. Randy. Question. Have we talked to the leadership teams in the school? Buildings. At this point, I've been working with principals on this one okay. because it is a management decision and yeah. school board approves the calendar. And I really strongly believe that if teachers say, no, no, we, we can handle it, we'll take, we'll come back in on the Monday, we're going to still have the record number of absences this year that it'll just continue from here. And I, I really believe sometimes people need breaks. And that April break, I think, is, is necessary for all of them. I really believe. But it probably does more to for us to settle it tonight and have the decision made so that it's not up in the air, you know, what, whatever we decide that I, I think that's a good thing too, so that they know what's coming. Yeah. So, and also they get to use comp time, personal time. And so when they do fill in subbing for other teachers and we can't find another sub and they give up prep, they actually get comp time. So most teachers will likely have enough days if they wanted to use to not come in. Again. Other discussion or questions for Dr. Lincoln? All right, so the motion was made by Director <coughs> Ling and seconded by Director Roaring to approve the makeup day for the teachers. Uh, the makeup day will be June 2nd, 2022. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed and abstained. Motion passes 600. Item G, strategic plan. Right, so I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna go through the strategic planning PowerPoint in as much depth as we did last month, because um, you've had this now to think about. So if we can just pull it up, however. Um, so, you know, we you have five options presented to you. Um, I would say, so MSBA, obviously, I'm gonna just, what I think I'm gonna do right now is give you the cons of all of them. I think the pros are out there, we can, we can figure that out. The reason I'm going to say that is because I think some of them really resonate. So, for example, MSBA, I think the two biggest cons is they were unwilling to come on site. They wanted to be virtual. I really don't feel that this process would work well in that model, especially when we don't have to. We're not in a COVID situation. We don't have that issue. Um, my second issue with them, this particular uh, proposal, is they weren't willing to rethink about a refresh of what we already have. Um, I don't believe we need to start from scratch. And it sounds like if they were to come in, we would. So that's to me, my the cons I see with this particular uh, offering. Next one, innovative solutions. Um, <clears throat> the problem I have with this one is it would be two full days from nine to three in September. I just don't know how we would get people to take off work. I think that's a huge ask of our community members because again, we need parents and other community members to participate in this work and to ask them to take time off of their own personal jobs. I, I feel is a big ask that it doesn't feel good to me. And so I just, th this one would, I think would be challenging. The next one. Is Lilypad. Again, I've worked with this particular person with a nonprofit. Um, the language around SWAT to me is also a little bit dated, and I don't appreciate that language when it comes to school districts. It feels very corporate to me. Even nonprofits could 
kind of, you know, get a little bit weird around that type of language. She would be willing to change that, but it just felt like just coming out with it, that's what her, her deal is. Um, I just don't know that that resonates well. Next one. Although she would change language, so we just wrote it. Um, Watson Consulting, I've dealt um, with Tom Watson a few different times around transportation. That is his forte. Um, granted, the other school district um, that utilized him had very good success. Um, I just haven't had that, that experience that I've had with him. It's always been around transportation. And so that's a little bit of an unknown to me for this particular proposal. Internally, um, if we did this, we would be, it would be a team led facilitated process. Um, the only con is just making sure that everyone in the community realize it's a strategic plan that was grassroots from community members that the board approves. Just we'd have to really be clear on the language so that a year from now in memory fade, it doesn't become the superintendent's strategic plan. That is still the community, all of us together, working in a collaborative nature where the board is able to approve how we move this forward. So it's up to you all. Discussion. Discussion. So I've been thinking about it. And I think that so superintendent work camps really worried that this is going to become superintendent work camps plan. But I'm not so sure that if you go with MSBA, it's not going to be MSBA's plan. Mm -hmm. If you go with Lily Pad, it's not going to be. It's like, you know, we got a form letter and we just fill in the blanks. We're right open school district, you know. Well, we love our kids, you know. What do we pick? A, B, and G. Okay. And then, you know, that it's almost what it seems like because they're all gonna, I mean, what are you gonna come out and say? You're gonna say, well, we don't like our kids. I mean, honestly, we're up and you know. We're in a little bit different area than we were when we did this before. We've been through COVID, but if you look at our strategic plan before, it was just after a couple of those really big school shootings. And I would guess any strategic plan that gets done around one of them, safety is going to be a really big part of it. And it probably has to be a part of it, but it's not going to be as big of a focus if we don't have that, you know, so fresh in our minds. So as much as we'd like to just refresh it, this should be a document that changes as often as school boards change as often as the times change you know so maybe we should just get really good at doing it ourselves <laughs> uh, okay, ahead, i i like the idea of us doing it as a district i think we can run it and you know, if something goes sideways or we're having a really hard time, then who's to say we don't look at another option at that point. But I think to start off, I think as a district, we should form the committees, do the do the work with the parents, with the staff, with the community members. And I completely agree. I, we can facilitate it ourselves. I mean, uh, most of us have done this in the I'll say civilian world. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. funny. That is funny. As, as we go through this, uh, and all we're asking for is uh, the value that the parents bring um, and the value that we bring to come together. Um, so we can we can take that in and uh, create a shared understanding of what it is that that we're trying to do. So um, I really I would really like the opportunity to help facilitate that and do that um, as part of the board and as a parent. And all that stuff. Mary Angela, anything you want to add or? No, I'm, I'm good to yep. do it internally. There's one other thing that I think really makes it easy doing it internally. We, we're really functioning as a board together. We don't always agree on everything, but we can get past that. You know, I think some boards, they get to a point where they don't agree on something and they don't agree on anything we seem to be able to get past it and and you know find the common ground and as long as we can keep on functioning like a board i just don't see there's any we don't need a referee my only concern is that we're not going to be all of us here in the same room you know in the next four eight whatever years okay we want something that's sustainable 
something that was going to last. And, um, I really, really hope that we honor the parents' input because ultimately that's why we're here. For the children, definitely, but also for our parents. And so we really have to be honoring what they bring to the table. Sometimes that gets discounted and I don't, you know, that's not fair. I really, really feel we have to be very careful how we do things. Um, I have no problem doing it. It's just that we have to be careful. Keep in mind, things are changing. This is a fluid thing. This isn't something that's just, oh, that's how it is. This is fluid. It keeps on growing. It keeps on expanding. It changes. You might have school shootings to address, or you might yeah. have a, a disaster like COVID. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen. So these things are very important to have in place, but to majorly have the community support in it. And I cannot be discounted in any way, shape, or form. That's my only concern. Okay. I mean, otherwise, yeah, I'm fine with trying to do this, but I, I really feel we need to incorporate as many people as we can. And even if we don't all get along with their ideas or they don't get along with ours, that's what makes it great. That's what will make the plan great. Cool. So in my, my job, you can call it a job as a farmer, I go to trainings. My goal is to walk out of there, even on the school board training, my idea, my idea is to walk out of there learning one thing because, you know, if you go in there thinking you know it all, then what's the point of going? And if, if you don't try to come up with one thing, a lot of times it's just an information overload. So if we could go through this and as a school board come out with a couple really good new directions or new things to watch, I think it'd be great. I really do. So... And, and I would, I would, yeah, I agree with you all. I think, I think it, any one of these options that we take, we would absolutely have to incorporate community feedback, right? I mean, I don't think any of us disagree with that or, or not, um, but I do agree. I do, um, I think we can schedule it. We can manage it better. There's, I think we right now have the best options inside internally to be able to do that. And I, I think, I think I, Greg, if, if you're there listening, he had a great point also about, I think it gives us an opportunity to talk with and continue to build that public, you know, feedback with the administration. And to, to Mary's point where this board's not always gonna be there, chances are many of these administrators might yeah. be here longer than we are. So if they can get that bond and that connection with the community, I think that's a, that's a great advantage to continuing to do this. And like Randy said, make it more fluid and. We may need to do this more often, right? It shouldn't be a, you know, once every four years we go and update it. Maybe we have to do it more regularly. So, yep, I agree with everything. So, we'll make that motion to, uh, you're going to make a motion to utilize the internal process for strategic planning process. Team live. What's a district team option? So the motion was made by Director Hofstad. Do we have a second? I'll second. So the motion was made to approve the strategic strategic planning process with an internal process led by the district team leadership team by the district team leadership team further discussion all in favor of this motion say aye aye, aye. opposed abstain motion passes six zero zero item h uh, this is to the ask is to move truth and taxation hearing and the regular board meeting from Monday, December 12th to Tuesday, <clears throat> December 13th. Okay, so just to give everybody a heads up on how the calendar is. <clears throat> so, I, and I just want to kind of maybe make a comment if I can about the strategic planning process. Um, 
April and May are crazy with sports. And we have to have students participate. It's not just parents, it's students. Mm -hmm. Their voice is critical to this. Um, so I've already got a date set in April for that first meeting. I'm thinking we can do a meeting in April, a meeting in May, a meeting in June, skip July, do a meeting in August, and then have others as needed once we get into the process. But the calendar so full, there's like one day available. Um, Tony Newman wasn't, <laughs> we sat down and went through this. It, you can ask Michelle, we, it was crazy. So what's happened here is in December, we're so limited because we have concerts and athletics and religion. So we have a band concert that is in conflict with us because we couldn't have it on a Wednesday. So the band concert's on a Monday, but I don't like to miss band concerts. I don't like it. The board should be able to choose to go to band concerts and the public shouldn't have to choose between a school board meeting and a band concert. So I would ask that um, we move it to Tuesday. We will have a basketball conflict, but there are a lot more basketball games than there are band concerts. So I just felt like if you had to miss something, it's the lesser... Yeah. So that's it. Questions for Dr. Lisa? And we're still within the right time. Yeah, frame yes, because yeah, we have to have it in by December 26th. Okay, so part way. Just have have so, sure. yes, we, I checked that too. We can still change it though on the tax statement. Let's talk to the county. I'll double check. Okay, Chris. I know that's when we realized there was a conflict last year. But I thought well, that was later, wasn't it? It because was later, but I know, yes. I don't know if it goes out, out in the Dave. proposed property tax statement yeah. or if it goes on the regular statement. I thought because we don't have that until September that we would have time. I think there's probably time here. Michelle, is Scott still on? Yes. Scott, yeah. do you know when we have to have our truth and taxation date to I'm sorry, Dave, you might know this too. Dave or Scott, do you know what date that is? I think Scott's got his computer up. So. I had to find you guys again. Sorry about that. Um, so yes, it needs to be held uh, between November 25th and December 27th, and it has to be after 6 p.m. Scott, do you know, so what's the latest date we can submit? So if we want to change today, do we still have time to contact the county and tell them, hey, do you update it to be December 13th instead of the 12th? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, because that, I mean, they haven't asked yet. We haven't, uh, okay. that, that time frame will come in September. I didn't know if they took it off organizational meeting. I don't know. Yeah, I think yep. we wait until closer to September okay. when we have to actually do that initial. All right. Yeah, when we do it in September, we'll give them the date as to when we're going to sure. do the truth and taxi, truth and taxation levy. Wow. All right, so there was a motion made by Director Baum and seconded by Director Hofstad to move uh, the truth and taxation hearing and the regular board meeting from Monday, December 12th, 2022 to Tuesday, December 13th, 2022. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes 6-0-0. We are on to item I, policy readings. J is after I. <laughs> policy readings, do we want to talk about it? I know. So I first policy readings coming up. Uh, so these we haven't looked at yet. Uh, 413 harassment, violence, 491 vaccination testing and face covering, and 714 fund balance. Uh, we're going to come back with what uh, what the policy committee uh, wants to look at for for those they they haven't been reviewed yet. Well, the vaccination. Yep, that one was approved, but the uh, changes to it that yeah. were out there. So we have to take a look at that and bring back to the board the recommendation. I feel like we want to talk about 491. Well, we haven't talked about it at policy meeting yet because we were going to kind of look at that a little differently. I would, so I'll give my feedback. My feedback is 
I don't think we should review it because if and when we would have to do this again, I think everything will change. So my recommendation, I feel like I wouldn't even spend my time reviewing it, but because we certainly aren't going to implement it unless it comes back as a federal mandate. So that's my two cents. It probably won't be the same mandate as it was. And that's what I'm saying too. It won't be, I'm sure. Yeah, you're right. I support pulling it. Give you guys time to focus on other things. When we come back from committee, if the committee decides to, that's probably the proper way to do this. The committee should probably say we want to nix it and then they'll just nix it. I think that's probably the right thing to do. <clears throat> okay. Well, okay. Yeah, you, you hate to emasculate the committees because the committees are doing such a good job right now. So yep, I would agree. The the one thing that I would state by having you guys review it by no means means we're implementing it or anything no. to that. So anything that was out there that we we're thinking about doing it or talking about doing it is not correct. Second reading. Yep, so uh, 522 Title IX, uh, sex non-discrimination policy. Uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of updates to that one, especially with uh, some statutes, the state statutes that, that govern some things there. And then uh, same thing with violence prevention, that one was, uh, <coughs> Um, not much to update. Okay. Yep. And then 806 is the crisis management policy. Um, this one just has uh, minor, minor changes from uh, a couple main changes and statute changes as well. So it would only need. Um... To approve it. So we will be asking the board to <laughs> approve policy 806, crisis management policy. Anybody have any additional thoughts? Otherwise, I will take a motion on that. No move. Go ahead. I'll second it. So the motion was made by Director Hofstede, seconded by Director Hackett to approve the second reading policy of 806 crisis management policy. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, motion passes 6-0. Item J. Uh, to, uh, we've come to agreement with the Royalton School District and the Royalton Education Support Professionals. Do you say just ratified it on Friday? So long overdue. So it's good. Good to be done. Good to be done. Just in time to start again. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this one's good for a while. <laughs> Any discussion on the way? So I'll take a motion to approve it. I'll motion to approve. I'll second. Motion was made by Director Donovan, seconded by Director Lane uh, to approve the master agreement between Roads and School District and the Roads and Education Support Professionals. Any further discussion, questions? No. Nope, don't have anything. <laughs> you look like you were going to ask something. No. All right. Mm -hmm. All in favor of uh, accepting or approving this agreement, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes 6-0-0. Zero, zero. I have something now to ask. I just think our, our negotiating groups have just really done a good job. And, you know, I think as a board, we really have 
to really let the that, that's something that our, our previous boards just didn't do was let the let the negotiating teams do what they were supposed to do. And it, it's been good. It's been a good outcome. So I'm just happy it's done. But like I said, just in time to start it all over again. So it's been a lot. We're, we're, yeah, we're current. We're current. We're current. <laughs> some some districts yeah. don't get that way. So, so. we are. We're close to current. Yeah, okay, almost, almost, current. almost. Current. Yeah. All right. Upcoming meeting schedule: Wednesday, April thirteenth, nine a.m. Policy meeting. Uh, Tuesday, April nineteenth. Uh, is that right? Tuesday. I know. I think you talked about you in your earlier yeah, report. You said two. You said Wednesday. I didn't think they were on Tuesday. Maybe I misspoke. Angela, do you remember? I don't know. Tuesday. The third Tuesday. The third Tuesday. Sorry, Tyler. Sorry, I was wrong. Sorry, Director Bauman. You got it. <laughs> the third Tuesday, which will be Tuesday, April 19th at noon. Um, and then our next board meeting will be April 25th, 6 p.m. I will take a motion to close the meeting for labor negotiations as permitted by Minnesota statute 13D.03. So moved. Motion made by Director Hofstad, seconded by. We are moving to a closed meet. Oh, sorry, got to vote. I'll I'll approve. Say aye. 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 Uh, opposed. <laughs> abstained. Thank you. Motion passes six zero zero. We will move to regular. Meeting at we will close the regular meeting at 7 32 p.m. Couple will want to come back in 10 minutes. Oh, five minutes. We'll